All right, guys, time, time for a new commander deck. We are building, or I've already built for you to check out, Brago, King Eternal. Uh, this card has been a really competitive commander for a very long time since the original Conspiracy set came out. Uh, but I just finally got around to building it. I wouldn't say this deck is competitive, but it's definitely got a lot of synergy and a lot of very direct uh, thematics to it. So Brago, King Eternal is two white and blue for a 2-4 flyer. It's a spirit. When it deals combat damage to a player, exile any number of target non-land permanents you control, then return them to the battlefield under their owner's control. So the whole theme of this deck is blink. Uh, you know, make creatures leave the battlefield, get them to come back. Uh, that's pretty much the entire build around on this deck. Uh, you could say that it's a glass cannon, but since Brecco only costs 4, you're going to be able to spend it for 6 mana when you play it again, 8 mana again, and you're just going to keep building this value engine. You're probably going to keep a lot of cards in your hand and draw a bunch as this deck starts to unravel. So let's dive in and see what we're playing with. All right. So first off, we got the lands to play around and take a look at. Uh, nothing too special on here. Uh, obviously a command tower, a bunch of basically dual colored lands, Hallowed Fountain, it's a Plains Island, comes into play tapped unless you pay two life, Prairie Stream and Irrigated Farmland, dual land typing again. Uh, these cards are very underrated in terms of like just being a fetchable, usable card. Uh, Glacial Fortress, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a Plains or an Island, you'll have one, and if not, okay, comes into play tapped. And Nimbus Maze is a card that I've never really played in a commander deck before, but uh, when I saw the card, I had to have it. So taps for colorless, or you can tap it for white, only if you control an island, or you can tap it for blue, only if you control a plains. So basically, it gives you the mana that you don't already have, given that you have one of those two types of lands. And if you have one of these dual typing lands in, it does the job of those lands. No restrictions, really. Love this card. All right, we have three fetch lands, Windswept Teeth, Polluted Delta, and a Flooded Strand, uh, just so they can fetch up things for us. Uh, Secluded Step and a Lonely Sandbar, basically just cycling lands that enter the battlefield tapped. Mid or mid or late game, if you get these lands and you don't want them, you can just chuck them away for something new, hopefully. All right, Manama, School at Water's Edge. Sometimes you're going to want to untap Brago uh, or any other type of legendary creature in the deck to get it ready for defense. All right, Castle Vantress enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an island, taps for blue, or you can pay two blue blue, tap and scry two, which is really good in Commander if you have nothing else to do, you can set up your next turn. And I also have an anti-decking piece built into here, Mist Vale Plains. Uh, it's a fetchable land, first off, so that's pretty cool. But put target card in your graveyard on the bottom of your library, play this ability only if you control two or more white permanents. There are other ways or reasons why we'd want to put cards from graveyard into our library as well, so this kinda does a few jobs. I threw in a Hall of Heliod's Generosity. I have a few enchantments in here, uh, nothing that I think is like too insane, but just in case I want to get them back. Uh, and also keep in mind this land is legendary, that's going to come into play later on. And of course this deck will be drawing you a lot of cards, or you won't be using cards so you want to keep building up a hand of stuff, so Reliquary Tower is another great thing to have just to limit a maximum hand size. In terms of basics, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 planes, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 islands. Those are pretty much the basic lands and the whole land package in here. Um, it's a pretty decent package. A lot of consistency with bacon, uh, basic lands, so you don't get um, blood mooned or anything like that. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. So let's move on to the actual cards that make the deck run. Uh, these are going by casting cost, so just keep that in mind. I'm just going to split this roughly in half. There we go. All right. So on the zero drops, just one, a Pact of Negation. Uh, I don't really play with this card a lot in Commander. I'm going to start playing around with it, especially because I hope to leave my lands open most of the time or not have to use them. Having a zero mana cost counter is a great thing to have. You do have to pay during your upkeep uh, the cost or you lose the game. The one drops, we've got a Thrabin Inspector. Enters the battlefield, investigate. So you basically just put a clue into the battlefield. Again, Brago is going to blink it over and over again. You're going to keep accumulating clues. It's also just a good one drop to get some card advantage later on. Giver of Runes. Uh, this is going to give Brago some protection. Uh, to give it protection from colorless or from the color of your choice. Make it so Brago really can't be blocked uh, by decks. Because if you don't connect to your opponent, 
through combat damage, you don't get the blink effect. I have a Soul Warden in here. Gains you a life every time a creature enters the battlefield. We got a lot of enter the battlefield stuff. This is going to gain us probably 10 to 20 life in a game. For a single mana for a 1-1, one, one, I'll take it. We have a Preordained, Scry 2 and draw a card, just to dig deep in the beginning. Same thing with Serum Visions. Draw a card and then Scry 2. One of my new favorite additions, this is actually going into a lot of my decks. Uh, it's one mana. When it enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. Uh, so we can keep doing that blink effect. But overall, this is just a really good like graveyard hate card. And if you don't need to hate on graveyards, you can always sacrifice it to draw a card. So this will allow you to just basically have some sort of control. And if you don't need it, throw it away for another card. All right, Mystic Remora. Uh, again, with Blinking, this is going to be a really synergistic card. I know this is a pretty powerful card. It's running a lot of competitive magic. Uh, but Cumulative Upkeep doesn't really matter if you're Blinking it every turn. I would love to pay one mana each turn just to play Mystic Remora. Uh, just pay the upkeep once each time. You're going to draw a lot of cards with that. We have a Soul Ring, obviously, to accelerate, especially into the two mana for Brago. Tithe, this card is so good, and if you're running white, you have to run Tithe. Search your library for a Plains card. If you have fewer lands to target opponent, you search your library for another Plains card, and you get them into your hand. It doesn't specify basic Plains, it just specifies a Plains. There's a lot of Plains in here that you can pull, and it's really nice to be able to get that kind of acceleration. Go first, play a land, wait, your opponent's play, okay, comes back to you. Or even if, uh, you know, you can wait a turn and then grab two lands from it. You're behind on a land, sure, but it's a great way to uh, get some acceleration. But also, if you're not going first, you just play this before your second land drop, and boom, you got your two for one on these lands. Omen of the Sea. Uh, this is actually the foil that I cracked in a Beyond Ther uh, Theros Beyond Death pack uh, that wanted me to play Brago. I don't know, I just saw it and I was like, ooh, that would go great in a Brago deck. Let's build a Brago deck. So it's one in blue for an enchantment, flash, enters the battlefield, scry two, then draw a card, and you can pay two in blue, sacrifice it to scry two. If you're blinking this every turn with Brago, you're scrying two, then drawing a card. You're going to take a lot of good stuff from there. All right, we got swift foot, swift foot boots and lightning greaves to protect Brago, and also give it haste on the second or third casting of it, so it can connect even faster. Stryonic Resignator, uh, Resonator, not Resignator, uh, this will copy Brago's triggered ability whenever it deals damage. Uh, you can blink, so you get double blink, which is even better. An Arcane Signa as a nice little mana rock, and a Thought Vessel as well. Thought Vessel reduces our max hand size, which is great. Uh, the cool thing about mana rocks is that when Bla Brago connects, if they're tapped, you blink them and you bring them back, and they're untapped, ready to go again. Curse Totem is kind of like a lockdown, like, fun police card. Uh, players cannot play any creature abilities requiring an activation cost, so it's going to be very difficult to activate abilities if this thing is on the field. None of my creatures really have activated a cost. Uh, Island Sanctuary. If you're getting blinks every turn to draw cards, you can refuse to draw the one card during your draw step, and you can give yourself this insane amount of protection uh, that you can only be attacked by creatures with flying or island walk. I used to play this card years ago when I was playing casual, like, you know, kitchen tabletop magic. And uh, it was just a great card to run because nobody knew how to answer it. Another new card, Heliot's Intervention, white, white, and X. Choose one. Destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments. You're just going to nuke the field with this. Or target player gains twice X life. Or just gain, like, you know, 15, or 16, 18 life if you can dump the mana into it. Uh, it's a great way to reco recover when people think you're almost dead. We have a counterspell in there, just take care of things. Tribute Mage, great card, is going to fetch a lot of things. A lot of the stuff I already went over, uh, we can fetch the Cursed Totem to lock down activation costs. We can grab a Mana Rock. Uh, we can grab any of the equipment that make Brago even better. So this is just a great thing to drop uh, into play and then keep getting blinks off of it to keep making the field more and more difficult to deal with. All right. We also have Reality Acid. This is another card that is like a key essential part for Brago. It's two in blue. Enchant permanent. When reality acid leaves play, enchanted permanent's controller sacrifices it. So all we have to do is attach this, swing with Brago, connect with them, blink it so reality acid leaves play, comes back into play onto something different, and that player has to sacrifice whatever permanent this originally left. Amazing card for this deck. Unquestioned authority. Two in white. Enters the battlefield. 
draw a card. It enchanted creature has protection from creatures, basically making it unblockable, and it's going to connect. So then we blink this actual enchantment as well. It comes back, and we draw another card. Act of Authority, another card built just for Brego. Enters the battlefield, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. If you do, its controller gains control of Act of Authority. We're never going to use that. I mean, probably not. Uh, but with Act of Authority, we play it, we exile it, and then we blink it, and then it enters and exiles again. Soul Herder, one white and blue for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Soul Herder. So even if Brago is just blinking things, this guy's getting stronger. But also, this gives us an additional blink on one of our creatures and just makes it even more powerful. All right, Eerie Interlude. Two in white, exile any number of target creatures you control, return them to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Another blink effect, and it's a nice little protection piece that we can shoot off during an opponent's turn. If somebody drops like a wrath effect, destroying all creatures, we can save our creatures. Basalt Monolith, another mana rock. Uh, it sucks that you have to pay three to untap it, but if Brago blinks it every turn, you don't have to pay that cost, and you have a mana rock that gives you three mana. Commander Sphere, uh, just another rock that you can sacrifice for a card every uh, eat during your turn if you need. Uh, just a nice way to get an emergency draw if you ever need it. Spell Crumple, one blue blue, counter target spell. If it's countered, put it on the bottom of its owner's library instead of into the graveyard. Then Spell Crumble goes on the bottom of its owner's library as well. This is just a nice way to knock something out and keep it out of the graveyard. And then also for the last three drop, we have a generous gift. Uh, destroy a target permanent, its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green elephant creature token. So we can use a lot of this stuff to like destroy things, there's a little bit of a control package. You know, there's a way to kind of lock down the field so Brago can do its thing and we don't have to worry too much about it. Alright, next up we have our uh, four drops and everything above that. Alright, so on our four drops, our first one we have is Whirler Rogue. Enters the battlefield, create two colorless 1-1 one -one Thopter creature tokens. You can also tap two untapped artifacts to make it so that a creature can't be blocked. Well, this is going to come in great for Brago. We're going to use those two creature uh, artifacts type being tapped to make Brago unblockable. We're going to connect, we're going to blink Whirler Rogue and back into play, and we're going to keep making tokens every turn. So now we have chump blockers, flying offense, uh, ability to make Brago unblockable, lots of neat stuff. Stonehorn Dignitary, 3 in white for a 1-4, enters the battlefield, target opponent skips his or her next combat phase. Well, if Brago keeps collect connecting, our opponent, one of our opponents at least, will stop having a combat phase. Alright, Archaeomancer, uh, this card is going to get real powerful in this deck, especially with things like Generous Gift or Counterspell or anything like that. Enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Even Eerie Interlude, which would blink this would bring Eerie Interlude back to our hand. So we basically would have a built-in uh, protection system for hopefully the entire game. Clever Impersonator, two blue blue, enters the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield, and if we blink it, we can change what it becomes. Faith's Fetters, three and white, enters the battlefield, you gain four life. Uh, enchanted Permanent's activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. If it's a creature, it can't attack or block. So we can not only lock down a creature, or a permanent, or whatever, but we can also gain four life every time we do that little blink. Restoration Angel, three in white, enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-angel creature you control, then return it. It's just basically locking in another blink in exchange for this creature's enter the battlefield effect. Glen Alendra Archmage, three in blue for a 2-2 flyer. Pay blue, sacrifice it, counter target non-creature spell, and it has persist, so it comes back. But if we blink it with Brago, we lose that minus one, minus one counter. So we can have a counter every turn set up and ready to go. And if we have, like, Restoration Angel, we could probably do some sort of, uh, you know, crazy little shenanigans for getting a counter and hopefully immediately being able to blink it from there. All right, uh, we have some Planeswalkers in this deck as well, because when you reset a Planeswalker, its loyalty goes back to what it started as. So three in white. Uh, for the Wanderer, I love this card. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. That's a nice little protection. The minus two ability, exile target creature with power four or greater. So I'm going to activate this ability, get the Wanderer down to three loyalty, 
Then Brago is going to hopefully blink it. It's going to come back into play with five, and I can exile another creature if I want to on that turn. We have Dovin Bon, two white blue for loyalty three. The plus one uh, just nerfs a creature, makes it kind of like knocked out, which could be helpful. Uh, the minus one, gain two life and draw a card. If we can use that, we don't have to worry about ticking down Dovin's abilities each turn. And the minus seven, you get an emblem with uh, your opponents can't untap more than two permanents during their untap step. If we ever get to something like that, uh, it'd just be great to drop onto the field. I also decided to toss in a Karn Scion of Urza. Uh, the plus one, reveal the top two cards of your library. An opponent basically chooses which card you get, and the other one gets exiled with a silver counter on it. The minus one ability lets you grab a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile. Not specifically the one that this Karn exiled. So you can get it, uh, do the plus one, do the exile, blink it, have it come back into play, and then do the minus one after that. And we can also just make uh, little constructs. There's quite a few number of artifacts in here, so this could actually ramp up to quite a scary board presence. I threw in a Panharmonicon, which basically doubles artifact or creature entering the battlefield effects. Great card to just toss in and just do some damage with it. Uh, Ifara, gold, God of the Polis, uh, two white and blue, six, five, indestructible. You need devotion of blue and white to be seven or more to make it a creature. And each upkeep, if you had another creature enter the battlefield under your control last turn, draw a card. It just turns into a draw engine, and you eventually hit your uh, devotion. And Afara just becomes a 6-5 indestructible that's just scary to have to deal with. Smothering Tithe. Uh, I've never put this into a deck. I'm pretty excited for running it. Uh, well, playing in a deck. I'm pretty sure I ran this in Rune. Uh, but I never got to play Rune and actually play Smothering Tithe. So I'm still looking forward to see what this does. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they can pay two. If they don't, you basically get a gold token artifact. Uh, into play, you can sack it for one mana of any color. Just a nice way to get a ton of extra mana. Return to Dusk, two white white, exile target artifact or enchantment. If it's during your main phase, you can do another exile of another target uh, artifact or enchantment. Just again, some more answers to things. Thalia's Lancers, this is one of the key cards for this deck. Three white white for a four four first strike. When it enters the battlefield, you can search your library for a legendary card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Planeswalkers are legendary, so... We're going to grab a bunch of our Planeswalkers. We're going to grab a bunch of random legendary things and put them into our hands. Cloud Blazer, three white and blue for a 2-2. Enter the battlefield, gain two life, and draw two cards. This blinks. It's going to do some real serious work for us. Lavinia of the Tenth, we're going to lock down our opponent's stuff. Three white blue for a 4-4. Protection from red, which you'd be surprised that's actually a useful ability to have once in a while. Enters the battlefield, detain each non-land permanent you control, your opponent's control with converted mana cost 4 or less. If this is blinking every turn, we could potentially put a lockdown on just about everything that they have. Right. I also have a couple sagas in here. Uh, Elspeth Conquers Death, 3 white white. The saga 1 ability is exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost 3 or greater. Okay. The two ability, uh, non-creature spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast until your next turn. And the three ability basically reanimates something with an extra counter on it. But we're probably, hopefully, never going to have it hit three. So let me explain. <coughs> uh, exile target per permanent. So we play it, we do the exile, then we use Brego, we swing, we blink it, it comes back. It hits one again. So we get to exile two stuff on playing this and connecting. Then when it rolls around to our turn again, we move to two. Non-creature spells your opponent's cast, cost two more to cast until your next turn. Brago attacks, connects, we blink it, it comes back, we do the one ability. We still had that two ability, like, activate. So then when our next turn rolls around, we move down to two, and then we keep blinking it again and again and again. Sagas are an amazing, amazing thing to use with Brago. Right, I have an Oath of Teferi, three white blue. When it enters the battlefield, exile another permanent you control. Return to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Uh, that's pretty neat. We get a cool little blink on here. But we also can activate loyalty abilities of planeswalkers we control twice each turn. So for our planeswalkers, we could, let's fish out like Dovin, right? I can minus one, draw a card and gain two life. Then I can minus one again. Then we can do Brago blink. Then he comes back, we can minus one again, we can minus one again. We can draw four cards that turn. It's uh, 
pretty scary what we can do with a lot of this stuff with uh, Oath of Teferi. We also have Big Teferi in here, three white blue. Plus one is draw a card at the beginning of the next end step, untap two lands. Great. Minus three, put not target non-land permanent into its owner's library, third from the top. And minus eight gives you an emblem with whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent an opponent controls. So we could play Teferi. We could minus three him down to the danger zone so he has one loyalty left to take care of this stuff. We can Brago Blink. He comes back. Then we plus one to draw a card. He's still at five now. Um, then we also get to untap two lands. Or if we do twice on this with the untap, we're going to have four untapped lands. We got some control stuff ready. I put in the Time Warp in here uh, just because I like the idea of Time Warp, Archeomancer, and Brago blinking them. Uh, just if we can do it and lock in an infinite turn game, if I can just do it once, I'll be happy. Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks. You may return target permanent with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. That includes lands, like fetch lands, or those cycling lands, or things like that. Uh, but also just to bring random things from our graveyard that have died earlier in the game. Duplicant exiles a uh, creature token. Uh, as long as the card exile with duplicant is a creature card, it has the power and toughness of that creature. I don't really care about mimicking those abilities. I care more about just getting an exile effect from a colorless source, so they can't even have much protection against it. All right, Jace's Mindseeker enters the battlefield. You basically mill your opponent for five, and you can cast an instant or sorcery card from their uh, stuff without paying the mana cost. Great way to just keep playing stupid, powerful cards over and over again. And it's also a nice body with flying. Elspeth's Son's Champion, uh, same thing with all the others. You minus three to destroy all the creatures of power four or greater. Nuke the field of things. And then blink it, and then put your three one one creature soldier tokens into play. All right, uh, we have Azor the Lawbringer, two white, white, blue, blue. Enters the battlefield. Each opponent can't cast instant or sorcery spells during that player's next turn. With Brago blinking it, you could eventually knock them out of sorceries. And when it attacks, it's basically a Sphinx's Revelation uh, on a creature, which, again, lets you draw cards and gain life. Madomai the Ageless, four white and blue for a 4-4 four, four flyer. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you get to take an extra turn. Cool. We'll do that with Brago. We'll get an extra turn, although it can't attack on extra turns we did get one swing in and then we have a 4-4 body to block mer battlefield enters the battlefield put four 1-1 colorless mer artifact creature tokens in the battlefield then also a tap ability to make mer battlesphere stronger and also do damage to defending player if we blink this three times we have 12 one ones we're going to do 12 damage to our opponent and we're going to attack with a 16-7 that's some scary stuff meteor golem Built for this deck, literally enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Let's keep blinking this thing over and over again and keep destroying stuff. Agent of Treachery, 5 blue blue, enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent. Beginning of your end step, if you control 3 or more permanents you don't control, draw 3 cards. Sorry, permanents you don't own. Uh, I've been reading this card wrong. I didn't know it was draw 3, I thought it was draw 1. Well, that's a more powerful card, uh, and when you blink it, it does some pretty neat stuff. Angel of Serenity, four white, white, white. Enters the battlefield, you may exile up to three other target creatures, a car, a creatures from the gra battlefield and or creature cards from graveyards. When it leaves the battlefield, return them to their owner's hand. So sure, you're going to be exiling your opponent's creatures, but you don't have to blink Angel. You can also knock out your stuff in your graveyard, so when Angel leaves, you get those cards back to your hand. Last two cards we got, Kiora, Best of the Sea God. Uh, this is another Theros card. I was like, ooh, this would be fun in Brago. All right, uh, the one ability, you make an 8-8 blue Kraken creature token with Hexproof. The two ability, tap all non-land permanents uh, your opponent's control. They don't untap during their next untap step. And the last is gain control of target permanent control, or opponent controls. Untap it. So again, we're probably just going to be bouncing between one and two over and over and over again. I'm fine with making 8-8 Krakens with Hexproof and tapping all my opponent's permanents. And then finally, we have Approach of the Second Sun. Six in white. Uh, if it was cast during your hand and you've cast another spell with the exact same name, this game, you win the game. Otherwise, you put it 7th uh, from the top and you gain 7 life. Uh, I'm always of the mentality you should have some sort of alternative win strategy, and this is the win strategy for Brago. Uh, just being able to have an additional thing to play when everyone's running out of resources, even if you can't play your commander or you're locked out, if you can drop this and then just survive for 7 turns, somehow, you could win this game. All right, so that's Brago. 
Uh, Brego is a lot of fun. Uh, this is more of a casual slash... I don't want to say casual, but I want to say it's a competitive casual deck. Uh, it doesn't have all the working bells and whistles in it, uh, but it does have a huge chunk of those cards that are pretty scary to deal with. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing it with my playgroups next time, and we'll see exactly how this deck does. Thanks for watching. Leave some comments if I missed some cards that you think that I should have had in here. I'm always open to see what else gets put into this deck. Uh, I go on EDH rec to see, but... I like hearing people's like weird or like side ideas that nobody ever saw coming and yeah, blow my mind. All right. So with that in mind, thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day.